What makes people label some public figures, let's say Ronald Reagan, Bill Clinton, Martin Luther King, Nelson Mandela, what makes people label these great communicators and others merely good? Why do some professionals enter the workplace and earn a tag as a great leader who can communicate a vision rather than simply a good performer? Why do the media repeatedly refer to certain organizations for their great communication with customers while others go unnoticed? Good communicators get a point across. Great communicators move people to action, strengthen relationships, and create cultures that last. Here's six tips to take your own communication from good to great. Number one, own it. What I mean by that, great communicators assume responsibility for their words. They speak with passion, personal commitment, and demonstrative action. They know that blaming, reframing, and claiming lack of knowledge about a decision weakens their message. Nothing reduces credibility, like starting a statement with, I've been asked to tell you that, whatever. Such a comment is like a neon light flashing, I'm not totally behind this idea, I'm not totally behind this new policy, but here goes. And number two, speak to the heart. Stir people's emotions as well as their reasoning mind. Make them feel compassionate, empathy, fear, love, envy, excitement, competitiveness, whatever the appropriate emotion to move them toward action. Three, strip away the complex to focus on the simple message. People slug away daily under information overload. Too much information paralyzes them. Data dumps, lengthy analysis, and abstract theories if all of it doesn't bore them to death, it confuses and often contradicts rather than clarifies. Great communicators summarize well. Can you say it in a sentence? Can you say it in a word? The fourth differentiator, paint a picture. Facts, figures, statements, and theories fade. They fade from your mind quickly. Give listeners a word picture to anchor your point or your message. Pastor John Metter recently used this analogy in a sermon series on overhauling your life in which he equated a life makeover to rebuilding a used car. He says, you need mentors as accountability partners to give, your feedback on your to give you feedback on your decisions, just as you need a pit crew like we've had to rebuild this old car. Analogies help. They simplify. Five, look for relevancy. People buy into what benefits them. Find out their goals, their concerns, interests, their questions. Then marry your message to that information to make sure it's relevant to them, not just you. For example, CEOs know they will never get a reporter to write a story about their own product or their service if they send a press release that tells only about the features of that new product. The reporter wants to know, hey, what's the angle? What will your product or your service do for my readers, my magazine readers, my own log, my online readers? Answer that question as the CEO in your press release and you'll likely get the reporter's attention. Far too many people speak from their own perspective, and they try to win people over to their way of thinking rather than starting the conversation from the other person's perspective and bringing them along toward a new view. How does your information benefit your listener? Start there. And six, a sixth difference. Be distinctive, be specific about the action you want. Hinting, implying, or assuming won't do. Vague is out to state, recommend, or suggest whatever is in your power to do. Specific, immediate action you want your listeners to take as a result of your communication. As you may have pondered about dieting, how do you get 20 pounds overweight? A half pound a week for almost a year with no action. So how does the group understand a clear message and yet change nothing with no clearly 
outlined action steps and no time frames. Does your team fall into the good or the great category as a communicating organization? What other differences can you note in the comment section below?